Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and today I need to make some placemats. Christmas is coming really fast and I need some new placemats for my table. And I'm going to make four placemats and four napkins. And these cloth napkins and the placemats are going to be reversible. Because they're going to be reversible, I've wanted to choose two fabrics that sort of can go both ways, definitely for Christmas and maybe into the New Year's. So I've gotten the red point set as for Christmas and this beautiful black with a gold pin dot on it. Both of these fabrics are from Timeless Treasures. I'll put a link in the description for you. Because it has the beautiful gold in it, I am going to use gold thread to top stitch. And I'm going to use the Superior Threads Gold Metallic. And you need to change your needle when you use a metallic thread. And the bonus is with a lot of thread companies now, they will give you the size of needle that is recommended. And right here it'll tell you a 9014. And I'm going to use a gold matching thread for the bobbin. And in order to do this, for the placemats, I'm going to need some quilt batting. And I have just saved up all of my little pieces of quilt batting and this is a perfect time to use them for the placemats. So I have four odd pieces of batting that are definitely 14 by 18. Matter of fact they're a little bigger so I'm going to be able to trim them off. So I'm going to cut this fabric and both of the colors I'm going to cut exactly the same. I'm going to cut four of each of the fabrics into 11 inch squares and I'm going to cut four both fabrics by 14 by 18 inches so that I can get these sewn and done and on the table. Let's get started. So let's start with the cloth napkins. I have the two pieces of fabric that are cut into squares and if you weren't able to get an 11 inch square right across the width of the fabric, use 10 and a half. It'll be fine. Whatever fabric you can use will work and put the right sides touching. Now I will not be using the metallic thread to sew them together. That will be used for top stitching. So put that aside for now. My bottom line thread is going to go in my bobbin and it's also going to go in the top. And this I'm going to use just to piece it together. I'm not going to do the top stitching with this, but this will remain in my bobbin. So what you're going to do is you need to sew a quarter inch all the way around, leaving a little bit of an opening so that you're able to turn these right side out. And I would use a fairly small stitch when you come to the corner because you are going to have to trim and turn that. So you want that stitch very, very strong. So I would recommend a two or a two and a half to stitch all the way around the quarter inch. So the quarter inch has been sewn all the way around. Now to make it a lot easier we can do two things. First we need to trim off these little corners and if you trim off the little corners it's going to make it a lot easier to turn and it's going to make these points come more pointy and not so round because the fabric here that you cut off has to force itself into this tiny area but by removing it it's not there so it'll be a lot easier to press and it'll look a lot flatter. Now just trim up to a couple of threads before your stitching thread. Don't cut into your stitching thread or you're going to have to restitch it. So after you've trimmed off the four corners the next thing is optional, but it is a very, very easy thing to do and it really makes the finish nice. You can take the seam allowances and press them into the napkin. By doing that, it accomplishes two things. When you do turn it, it already has this seam here folded, so when you top stitch, it's already nice and flat. The other thing is when you turn this right side out, the corners and the edges already want to lay flat. For example, this one here I've not even pressed and you see already how it wants to come out to the edges. So it's a lot easier to press. So once you have them all turned, then you need to give them a good press. And we're going to put these aside because we're going to top stitch these after we have finished the placemats. That way we can do it all together at the same time. Okay, now for the placemats. 
The placemats need to be layered because you're going to put the batting in all at the same time. So you'll put your batting down first, then you'll put one of your fabrics facing up. The next fabric is going to be facing down so that the two right sides are touching. So you have your back of your one fabric and the batting on this side. I would give them a good pin and a good press because you want that batting to be nice and flat. And you're going to stitch just like you did the napkin or quarter inch all the way around, leaving an opening to turn. So they have all been stitched a quarter inch. Now, as you can see, I have not pre-cut my batting small, and there's a reason for it. I'm going to cut it now, and the way I'm going to cut it is going to help you turn this right sides out to lie nice and flat. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold back both pieces of fabric, and I'm going to cut as close as I can to the stitching without touching the stitching line. And it's very easy to put your ruler underneath the seam, underneath the fabric, right up against the seam line, keeping the ruler against the table. Fold your ruler back and you will be able to cut right along that line and cut off all that extra batting. Now don't cut into the fabric, <laughs> just cut the batting off. By doing it this way, what the ruler does is it holds the seam allowance out of your way and it saves a lot of time. I will do that on all four sides. So you can see all of the seam allowance and the batting has been trimmed inside. Now the next thing to do is to trim off the corners just like you did the napkins and then we can turn the right sides out and press them. So we have the placemats all turned and pressed flat and we have the napkins all turned and pressed flat. And you can see now that both the napkins and the placemats are reversible. Now we have the issue of sealing up that little hole. There are two ways you can do it. You can run a line of stitching very, very close to the edge, or you can finish it by hand. I prefer to finish it by hand because, well, I like the look of it. The next stitch is going to be top stitching all the way around. And this is what I want to use the gold for. So I'm going to set up my machine to use the gold thread. Then I'm going to do a quarter inch all the way around all of the napkins and all of the placemats. And with the gold stitching, they are now done. When you do use the gold thread, you will have to put your tension somewhere around a one. So give that a try if you're having a problem. And here you go, we are finished. Two-sided napkins and two-sided placemats with a beautiful gold stitching on it. Now you can end here, or if you would like, you can continue and quilt the placemat. But either choice is up to you. So there we go, we have a black side and we have the Christmas side. Either side works good for me. This really is an afternoon project. I was able to get all of them done in an afternoon. What's really nice about making the reversible napkins and placemats this way is you can use any fabric and you can do them any size. So really the possibilities for your place setting can be endless. I will put a link in the description of all the things that I did use so you can check them out. And as always, thank you for joining me today. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.